Okay, welcome to lesson four. Um, what we're going to do in the next four lessons is go over each one of these major windows and kind of go through the major functions. After that, we're going to be getting into editing finally. But uh, we'll do four quick sessions on this window, this window, this window, and this window. These four different windows, four main areas of operation in Premiere. We've got a little bit of a different uh, project open here. We've got some synced clips in here where I've synced um, the footage. Uh, along with some audio. We will go over a syncing lesson later on showing how to sync video and audio together if you're using like a clapboard and using a separate audio device. But uh, right now I'm going to be... Sorry, I'm shutting off my playback so I get a little bit more speed, recording speed here. Uh, um, but we will get into syncing later on. Uh, anyway, so right now uh, I'm going to show you kind of how to operate out of this window. A couple things we've already shown you guys how to do like uh, organizing clips and bit creating bins things like that. Um, but now we're just going to kind of show you the basic operation here. Um, some of the things that I did not mention before, well first of all, I'm going to arrow this down. I'm going to uh, click on a clip here. Just single click. Uh, so it's highlighted. Um, is this area right up here? I have not. Uh, this is uh, the basic information for any media file that you click on down here. It will show you the basic information. There are some uh, kind of important bits of information here. What it's going to show, and first of all, if it is not showing up here, um, what you need to do is go over to this little window right here, to this drop down menu, click on that, and go down and check mark preview area. If that is not check marked, it will not show it. It'll turn off that area right here. Um, so if you want to see that, you just simply click on the clip, just single click, uh, but go up to this drop down menu and go to preview area. That will open up this preview area here um, and it will show some important uh, items, some important, important uh, information about your clips. It will have, um, first of all, the name of the clip right there. Uh, then it will have um, what type of file it is, if this is a movie file, if it's an audio file. And then for video fi video footage here, it will show um, its resolution. This is a kind of important information. Um, if you're editing, if you're going to be mixing different formats, it's good to know what the resolution is. This is 1920, uh, which is uh, vertical, that is, or the horizontal pixels going across your screen. It has 1920 pixels going across by 1080. Uh, which is your vertical pixels there. So you have 1080 and you have um, 1920 going across. So actually, if you want to ever p figure out your pixel aspect ratio, um, I'm going to grab a calculator. And under the calculator here, you're just going to go 1920 divided by 1080. And there is your aspect ratio right there. So you divide your horizontal pixels by your vertical pixels and you end up with a 1.78, if you round that up there, 1.78 or 1.77, some people call it, uh, aspect ratio. Now if you, um, the larger number you get here, the wider you're going to get. And some movies show their uh, aspect ratios at like uh, right around 1.96, anywhere from 1.96 to 2.35, which is much wider. Instead of this sort of screen here, you're going to have uh, your screen going wider. You're going to have more horizontal pixels than vertical pixels, and you'll have like a 1.96 or a 2.35 uh, aspect ratio. Right now we have a 1.7. This is a standard 16 by 9. For every 16 pixels we have across, we have 9 pixels up. Um, up and down. So that is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio equals out to 1.77, which is standard for 16 by 9. Um, okay, so we have 1920 by 1080. Uh, this is what's called your pixel aspect ratio. Uh, pretty much everything you're using nowadays is going to be a 1.0 uh, pixel aspect ratio, which means they're square pixels. Um, not rectangular, they're, they're, they're square. Uh, some of the earlier formats like DV or HDV will have uh, these stretched pixels where they're trying to fit more uh, or, or less pixels into more resolution to make it look like it has a higher resolution when it actually doesn't. Like HDV is 1440 by 1080 but it shows in 16 by 9 because they are stretched pixels. Um, so they have less, it has less resolution, but they're able, so it therefore has less information. Um, but it is 
a, um, a stretch pixel aspect ratio, making it look like 1920 by 1080. Um, you have the duration of the clip right there. You have your frame rate, and you have uh, this little P at the end here. By the way, this 23.976 or 29.97 uh, is essentially either 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. 23.976 is what's called drop frame. Uh, this deals with broadcast time. Um, if it was 24 frames per second, if you, um, if you drop like this portion of a frame off um, every second, then it fits into what's called broadcast time. If you ever want to, just if you just Google uh, drop frame and non-drop frame, uh, uh, it'll bring up an explanation as to what that's used for. Uh, but this is pretty standard for broadcast. For film, it's 24 frames per second. But for broadcast, if you're shooting things for broadcast, it's usually 23.976. This is pretty standard. The P stands for progressive scan. Uh, as opposed to interlace. Interlace is basically combining two fields together to combine to create one frame, and it has kind of that videoish look, uh, kind of a video look. And progressive scan uh, scans the entire image on the screen at once, and it is basically well, it does it from top to bottom. But this is, it is basically um, uh, it basically simulates the way film looks. Um, so progressive scan looks more like film. Interlace looks more like video. Uh, so this is kind of meant to be film style here. This is a movie, and it's a 23.976, or 24 frames per second, progressive scan. And then this deals with the audio right here. We're at uh, 48,000 hertz uh, on the audio, which is a, a little better than, than CD quality. <clears throat> um, and 16-bit audio, good good level audio here, really 24-bit if it is what you really need if you're shooting nice cinema audio. Uh, at least, and uh, and this is mono. These are mono files, not stereo. We'll get into audio later on as well, and talk about the difference between mono and stereo. Um, but but all that information there, as you click on each one of these clips, you'll notice um, right here. This is just an audio file. It's got audio. It's got the duration. Um, it's got uh, 96 hertz, 24 bit. This is the audio recorded for this film, which is very high quality audio. Um, at 96 hertz, 96,000 hertz, and 24-bit uh, stereo audio. This is really nice, high quality. This could be used as basically cinema audio here. Um, anyway, uh, a couple other little items here that we need to show in your project area. Um, let's go down and kind of show some of the icons. We mentioned earlier uh, the list view and the icon view, and then the difference in the size. Here you can make bigger or smaller thumbnails. I'm going to keep this in the list view for my project. Um, a couple other things we mentioned is you can double click on these files here and they open up these folders um, into free floating windows. If you hold down Option or Alt and double click, it opens it up in its own tab. If you grab this little bar here, you can scroll back and forth between your tabs. I'm going to close that one there. And um, let's see what else we've got here. We, we've also got um, these items down here. Automate to sequence. We'll talk about this uh, a little bit later. This is gets a little bit more complex. But you've got a find function to find. Uh, you can. This will bring up a separate find window, and you can type in names and find certain clips, uh, audio, video that that um, contains certain names. Uh, if you're looking for a certain scene number that's been named, you can type that in. And this is really um, detailed here where you can find out, where you can tell it to search by frame rate, you can tell it to search by endpoints, outpoints, tape names, a whole bunch of different types of things that will bring up this, the searched items uh, within your project here. It'll find all those items. And uh, you, have, uh, you can tell it starts with, ends with, you have a whole bunch of uh, search criteria here in this find. Um, down here we introduced, we showed you guys how to make new bins by clicking on this. We'll make a new folder. The reason why they call them bins is because that refers to film, the film days where they actually put the film strips, the different clips, into bins, hanging them on little hangers. If you want to look up on Google, you can search that. Type in film bin on Google and go to images and you'll see some film bins, some old style film bins that they put scenes into. They usually put uh, scenes into individual bins. Um, right here, if you click on this new item icon, 
it brings up several different items here. You have uh, some generators here. You, you can generate a new sequence. We already have a sequence here. We're going to talk about creating a new sequence. Um, we've got, uh, you can create an offline file and attribute information to that and then later on attach a file to it if you wish. Um, this is very rarely used. Uh, adjustment layer, we'll talk about adjustment layers. You can um, put a layer above a uh, whole bunch of clips and change uh, that clips attributes. You can create titles in here. You can create uh, bars and tone, black video clips, generate video clips, uh, closed caption items, color mats, a whole bunch of different things. Um, under the, This is basically a generation button. You click on this, it'll generate video files for you and sequences and other items. But a few of these things down here, we showed you the preview area. Uh, we've showed you the hover scrub before when you hover over a clip. Uh, just to show this one more time, I'm going to option double click on this show icons and uh, and you can hover your mouse over this is has this enabled where you can hover over these clips and skim through them you also have uh, thumbnails if your thumbnail is checked when you go back to your list view uh, all the items that are individual video clips will show as thumbnails instead of um, the ones that are just uh, video clips will show up as thumbnails instead of um, just this little film strip here. But uh, those are the main features. We did show you how to do search here. You can type in a certain name of a clip and it will find those clips. Like if you want to find scene one, it'll find all the items with scene one inside of the name, take one. If you've been doing some editing, you can go to the History tab and you will see a list of all the items you've, you've done since you've had this session open. If you want to undo more than once, you can hit simply Command-Z or Control-Z to undo. And watch this as I hit Control-Z. You'll notice it goes back one step. At the bottom is the most recent and the top is the, is the earliest. If I hit Control-Z again, you'll notice it's grayed out these two. It, is und it has done undo on these two and has gone back to this point in time. If you keep doing that, uh, Command Z, it'll eventually go back to the beginning. If you want to skip past all these, you can just and go and redo all these items. You can just click on this last one and it just suddenly redid everything that I just undid. Um, the shortcut for a redo is on a Mac control or Command Shift Z on a PC control. It'll be Control Shift Z on a Mac Command Shift Z. Uh, so Command Z will undo. Command Shift Z will redo. So here we go again. Command Z. Command Shift Z is undo and redo. And if you want to skip a whole bunch, if you want to just go back a whole bunch of undos, just click here. And it's great at all these items here. And you're back to this point here. If you want to redo those, click on that and you're back to that point. And those are the main items in the project window.